Yo, what's going on guys? This is Shadow Dragon and we are back with the Fruits of the Literature Club. And yeah, um, last episode, we got discharged from the hospital. And yeah, we actually slept with Sayori last night. We protected her from harm, from the, um, I don't know what they were called, I forgot, but from the, the guys that kidnapped her basically. But yeah, now we're back at school. Um... Hopefully gonna run into Natsuki and Yuri again, because we haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. Shadow, welcome back! Weird to see you in normal clothes. Like, it's literally been forever, Monica, what's up? Monica walks over and greets me, smiling. Yo, Monica! How you feeling? I'm great. I'm also really glad you decided to come in today. Yeah, it's been overdue for a couple days now. I've been busy after school lately, so I never really had time to come in. I understand. Well, we're going to be starting soon here. Find a seat and get comfortable. All right. Monica turns and walks towards her desk. She walks both Yuri and Natsuki peering up behind her. Yes, good to see him again. <laughs> Look, he was finally back. It took you long enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I was busy rescuing your friend to make sure the rest of you are safe or anything. He went there. <laughs> Well, it's good to have you and her back. Not that it means I missed you two or something. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. It's good to have you and Sayori back, Shadow. I believe all of us missed you dearly, especially after everything that has happened. I guess it would be a lie if I said I didn't miss being here either. And I know Sayori missed you all extremely. Look past both the girls and watch Sayori hop Monica with something at her desk. She looks at me from across the room waves. Uh, thank you for doing all you did for Sayori. I know you got hurt doing it, but uh, again, thank you. Yuri blushes and looks away. Yeah, I heard you got really hurt. Are you okay? Not that I care anything, it's just I... I think he stands her words for a second before I raise my hand up to stop her. I'm gonna be okay. It's only been three days since that night, but I'm recovering quickly. That's good. Natsuki looks up to the for a moment in her attitude. I can tell she has a general concern about my health and well-being since the incident. I smirk and meanwhile around to prove that I still have my ability. I, I also heard you confronted some of the people who were bullying Sayori here at school the other day. That is correct. Uh, that's very noble of you. Yuri clasps her hands together and holds them to her chest as if she was picturing herself in Sayori's shoes. <laughs> Sorry guys, we chose Sayori. <laughs> Not single looks at tree, pops her head out for a sec before looking away again. See, Yuri, uh, Sayori's been very happy since she came back. And normally when you went around, she would be... Uh, Natsuki, how would you describe it? Well, she's always bright when you're around, but if we actually started coming to school here, she was... Her brightness was dim. Natsuki makes quotes with her fingers. They're both referring to Sayori's depression, which has been hitting her hard recently until the kidnapping. I expect her depression to worsen as a result of everything, because normally a person who suffers from depression would amplify the emotions they feel. As someone who actually has depression... Like, this, this honestly hits pretty hard. And, yeah, I'm just glad that Sayori's getting help. Like, it's good to have people that help, you know. Like, I'm okay, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> just wanted to bring it up. Because, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, let's get going. Twisting their minds to make them think they were the cause of what happened in general, thus, thus making their depression worse. But I haven't seen Sayori like that at all lately. In fact, she's been especially bubbly and joyous. I don't know whether to be worried or be happy. Better to just stay observant, just in case. Yeah, I guess lately she's been a lot happier. Which, I'd prefer to use the alternative, don't you think? I'd prefer to the alternative. Both girls nod in agreement. Monica calls Yuri over the whole first, so she turns the shuffles away, leaving me and Natsuki in the front of the room. Natsuki looks at me hesitantly, before finally speaking, breaking the somewhat awkward silence between us. Listen, I'll make this quick because I don't want you to think I'm being too mushy or anything. Uh, thank you for protecting my friend and getting her back to us safe and sound. You're a good friend and you're also a good boyfriend to her. I'm sorry for saying that you weren't. Natsuki looks away from me and seems hurt by her own words. I place a hand on her shoulder and turn her face for looking into her eyes. I understand that at the time you were upset. It's natural for someone to throw blame around when something like this happens, even when they don't want to or don't realize they are. I accept your apology, Natsuki. Without saying another word, she closes her eyes and gives me a hug. Huh? What the hell are you doing? She squeezes me for a second and releases me. Don't get any weird ideas. I just want to say you're a good friend, and I guess a hug was a good way of expressing that. I see. I pat her on the head gently and she recoils. Don't mess up my hair! It was already messed up before I patted you. I chuckled deeply to myself, but she, she gently hits me on my good arm. It's good to have you back, dummy. 
And Suki smiles and walks back to her desk. Sayori looks over and walks up to me. Uh, hi, Shadow. Yo, Sayori, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic today. I'm so glad you're back in the club. I never left. I just had to take care of stuff with Julia for the last few days. Did everything go okay? Yep, now I have time to spend here at the club. I take my hand and begin to ruffle her hair with it. And with you. Stop! <laughs> Sayori's blushing face not to leave the ideas of me feeling today. It's only been three days since I arrived in the forest to save her. Since we returned to staying at her house, and I am still at mine. But lately, I haven't been at the club since Julia and I have been having regular meetups to discuss additional information. So far, enough really important has been uncovered, but it looks as if a majority of the people who are involved are now in custody. And as a result of that, I haven't seen Sarah much these last few days outside of class. So I guess seeing her and being able to spend more time with her here is a good thing. So, are you happy to be back? Of course, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, I'm really glad to be back here at the Literature Club. Word does go around the school, so now people know I had a hand in bringing Sayori back. To what extent still is a mystery to me. Which gives me notoriety I don't really desire. Some other guys in my English class kept asking me question about I didn't even offer much response to them. It slightly pees me off that some people went into my business like it's their own, but I guess it's just as easy to ignore them or blindside them with something different. After a day or two, though, everything has calmed down. Sayori grabbed onto my arm and gently pulls me to the other girls. Come on, let's go start the club already and we can all have fun. The other girls smile and get to their seats. Oh, man. The club went as normal. We all talked about different kinds of literature and poems and joked about Sayori misunderstanding a word. Yuri and Atsuki tried their best to get Sayori and I talked... And I had to talk about the cool things I did to save her. But thankfully, Sayori understands that it's best we both stay quiet about what happens. She just kept a normally bubbly face on and said something really corny like, <laughs> He was my hero. In which the other girls would all, would all, oh, look directly at me. <laughs> God's sake. I'm gonna lie, it felt a little weird to be put in that position, and I hope to God's last time to look at me and do that. But after each of us read poems to each other, I take a slip of paper out of my pocket and place it onto the desk in front of me. Each of the girls look at me in bewilderment as if I just pulled out a bar of gold out of my pockets. You wrote a poem? Of course I did. You did say that we're going to read poems today, right? Yeah, but because of what happened, I didn't really expect you to bring one in. Surprise! <laughs> I can't wait to read it. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've read one of your poems. I'm interested. Well, it can't be better than mine, so let's see. Oh, man. Where this road has brought me. The road ahead of me was paved with dirt and gravel. Mendy meandering through the bumps and gouts of my daily tribulations. But something changed along the way and the dirt turned to grass. The rocks turned to flowers. I tended to deny this false pretense my mind beheld. But for some reason, I didn't question it. I kept going. The clouds overhead dissipated and the sun shone down on me once more. It feels as if forever since I last saw it. But the road ahead has a stop in it. As I approached it, I saw her. The true embodiment of everything I was missing as a person. The closer I got, the more scared I became, but the better I felt. She sat down in a patch of grass, smiling at the world. <laughs> Man, this is beautiful. She sat down in a patch of grass, smiling at the world. When she saw me and I saw her, it all changed. Instead of turning away and scoffing like my past, she took my hands into hers and made the road ahead a road worth traveling. She's by my side now, walking the same road. How things ended up this way, I will never know, but one thing I do know is where this road has brought me. That is an amazing poem. <laughs> oh, well, that's making me emotional. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Each of the girls looks stunned except for Sayori. She looks off to the side trying to hide her face, which is red as a cherry right now. Amazing. Ah, oh, you did a very good job with the language, Shadow. Whoa. Uh, uh, thank you, Shadow. Sayori gets to check close to me and wraps her arms around me. Ah, oh, well, you're welcome. I'm glad you all liked it. I fold the paint back up and hand to Sayori, who takes it and holds it against her chest. I love it so much. It's a Shadow poem about me. <laughs> okay, everyone. I think that is going to be a good place to leave it for today. Natsuki and Yuri turn away and start to unpack their things. I mean, start to pack up their things. Monica looks at me and gives me a sneaky wink that looks at Sayori. Sayori looks back at me and I can already predict what she's going to say. Shadow, can we... Yes, we can walk home together. <laughs> Yay. Monica gets up and starts to pack up her stuff as well. Sayori already seems to have gotten everything ready to leave. I grab my backpack and sling one of the straps over my good shoulder and start towards the door with her. As she and I leave the room, she grabs my hand with hers and stays close to me. We both made our old spot and split up. Hey, Shadow. Yeah? Do you want to hang out later? I don't see why not. I just got to get something for Julian and then I'll head over. Okay. 
So Yuri bends and gives me a hug. Before I can even retaliate, she lets go and trots off towards her house. I watch her as she goes and then walks to my house. I toss my backpack to one of my couches to grab a small manila envelope that was placed neatly on a small coffee table in the middle of my living room. It's labeled shadow with familiar neat handwriting for a specific brunette I know. I take a seat onto the couch and open the envelope and examine the contents. Inside are several files and documents about the people who were detained and killed the night I brought Sayori back. Initially, there isn't anything that is useful. We can never really just tell if something is useful at first glance. Ashley told me to look for outliers such as age, race, occupation, or finances. The ages of people involved are scattered across the board, so there is little I can gather from that other than the operating group not discriminating against age. They'll take whoever they want in their ranks. The races too are also mixed, which is odd since a lot of crime syndicates are predominantly Caucasian, Hispanic, or African American. So this group once again will take anyone into their ranks, which doesn't really strike me as organized crime. Occupations don't tell me anything useful at all, and neither do finances. So our overall conclusion is that these people were hired to do the things they did, but by who? We don't know, and police interrogations don't tell us anything unusual. <laughs> or anything useful. Bro, I swear it was Kagan. Like, what happened to that guy? He got punched and he's just gone. Scale into myself, put the documents back in my envelope, and slide it into the couch seat as a temporary stash. My phone dings and it's a tech message from Tiori. Hey, I'm gonna take a shower and clean up a bit before you come over. Sorry if I take a bit. Siri says one of her usual emoticons, and I just offered an acknowledgement and put my phone back in the pocket. Leaning back into the couch, I wait for Julia to give me a call so we can discuss a few things, and it isn't long before she arrives at my door and invites herself in. I return the envelope to Julia and we conclude that until one of the people in custody breaks about their boss, nothing else provided is going to be useful. I'm caught it, it's Kagan. I'm caught it! And with an irritated sigh, I accept it and follow Julia outside. When I saw Julia and I continue to talk in her car for longer than I really expected or wanted us to, she gave me the normal run that no one should know of how much involvement I had in the situation, and if possible deny any involvement completely, it's customary for agents of the company to not exist when things like this happen. Which I am more in tune with since I'm easily able to work in the shadows and disappear just as quickly as I appeared. When we finish our talk, the sun has started to go down and the night creeps up. Close the door behind me, I grab a quick glass of water and down it from the faucet. I still haven't heard anything from Tsuyori since she messaged me earlier. Oh no! A small twinge of uncertainty starts to envelop me and makes me feel like I should go check on her. I mean, I'm done with Julia anyway. Putting the glass away in the cupboard, I exit the front door and start walking to Tsuyori's house. Walk into a house where all the lights downstairs are off. It takes a second for my eyes to adjust, but something just feels off. To be safe, I decide not to call out for her and just go to her room. Quietly shulking up the scare... Shulking up the scares, yes. Quietly skulking up the stairs, I finally reach Sherry's bedroom. The door is closed and light inside is on. I press my index and middle fingers against the top of the doorknob. It's cold, so no one has touched it recently. This guy's smart. Sherry said she was going to take a shower earlier, so I quietly turn and head to her bathroom. So I noticed that there's still some humidity still lurking in there and a damp towel, but no Sayori. So she must be in her room. But that's odd, she isn't making any noise or movements at all. I turn to a door and I swallow it, survivor, having my mouth and I gently open the door. Don't do it! Boo! Kagan? What the heck? He's got her at gunpoint! Oh my god. Okay. What the hell? The sight before we nearly freezes me in my tracks? Kagan is holding Suro against his chest with an arm wrapped around her waist and the other pointing a gun at her head. My blood instantly turns cold and he looks into my eyes. <laughs> Finally! Jesus Christ, you take so long just to check up on your... Sayori, what is he to you now? Suro stops helplessly trying to pry his arms away from her. Oh, come on, sweetheart. You can say it. Get your hands off her, Kagan. Keep my voice down. Calm, I try to rationalize the situation, assess what exactly is going on, how to counter it. Kagan's appearance is disheveled, like he was under a lot of stress and finally snapped. His eyes look calm and cold as if this was planned. He has a couple of scratches on his arms, no doubt for Tsuyori trying to get out of his chokehold. He holds what looks to be a generic 9mm handgun, his finger already on the trigger ready to fire. No, I don't think I will. You don't control what happens anymore. I do. Kagan, if you hurt her, I swear to God I'll make sure you suffer a fate worse than death. At this point, what are you going to do? I have the gun and I'll do whatever I want with it. I don't offer a sponsor to slowly place the left side of the room. Kagan shifts him Kagan shifts him and Sayori so they're constantly facing me head on. I can't get an angle on either of them. I want you to stay back against that wall right there. He nods to the wall that Sayori's calendar posted on it. I slowly comply and get close to the wall. 
Zero makes eye contact with me, tears trailing down her panicked face. He makes anger taking over me, I try my best to remain calm and collected. The gun that Kagan holds doesn't look like it has a modified trigger system, so if I could figure out what type of handgun he has, I could, I could determine the pressure needed to discharge a round. I can't risk doing anything as if it will mean Sayori gets hurt. Damn it, what do I do? I raise both my hands outwards around my wrist to show Kagan I don't have anything in my hands. I was trained to do this to show that I'm not much of a threat to the aggressor as he is to me. It also makes me feel like they are in more control of the situation. Why are you here, Kagan? <laughs> what does it look like? It looks like you're just setting yourself up for a failure here. Failure? <laughs> failure? I've already won, Shadow. Won what exactly? Ever since you came here, you've ruined everything I have had planned. Planned? So you mean everything was planned to circumvent you? If you had not shown up that night, I looked through Sierra's bedroom window. None of this would have happened. You got involved in something you really shouldn't have. You were the reason all this happened. So, like, you really shouldn't be around girls like Sayori. She's sweet, caring, and trusting. But you, you have the eyes of a killer, the demeanor of a man who only knows to harm and not heal. You are better off alone or in school, minding to yourself, or remaining the weirdo that we all initially thought you were. So you mean to say that because I stopped your perverted peep session, you caused everything to happen? For a lack of better terms, yes. So the kidnapping was planned by you. <laughs> kind of, yeah. People do almost anything if you promise them what they want. So you purposely hurt the girl you desired. Sometimes you have to do what's necessary to justify your memes. Memes, not memes. <laughs> memes, sorry, I just ruined the series. <laughs> You're a smart guy, you understand this, eh? I don't see how hurting an innocent girl when your problems are with me would justify any of the atrocities you've committed. You paid people to bully so you're always sticking set up against them and protect her. Guilty as charged, but that's nothing compared to what you have done, Shadow. In the last 24 hours, how many people have you killed? Oh yeah, I know. I was the one organizing all of it. Idiot. Surprise, you son of a... Oh, oh get the little mean now, eh? How could you put Zero through all of this? You've caused too much trouble for me to just let this go. People at school talk about how much of a hero you are, about how you saved Sayori from hell, and how you were her angel. God, that should have been me. Let me guess, you planned to say, save Sayori from the kidnappers just like you originally planned with the bullies? Now you're catching on. No. I'm really, I really hate this guy. It's easy to win a girl's heart over if you save her stoically. And it was going swimmingly until you showed up and ruined all of it. Sorry to run on your parade there, Kagan. Shut the F up. I don't want to hear your I don't want to hear your mouth right now. P please, Kagan. Shut up, Sayori. I'm a little busy dealing with a cockroach that's been bothering me. I press the barrel of the gun to Sayori's temple and my stress immediately skyrockets. So you decide that after I ruin all your plans, you're just gonna pull a stunt like this. What exactly do you think something as genius as this will accomplish in the end? Get on your knees and beg me to keep Sayori alive. Oh, please, oh, please, Mr. Gunman, please don't hurt my girlfriend. I make a mocking tone in my voice and do slight jazz hands to add insult to injury. Do you think I'm joking? At this point, I just want you dead. With you gone, my life would be so much easier. The same could be said about you. But I bow to no man, especially one with my girlfriend held hostage. This isn't a request. This is a demand. He pressed the bell against the his head again. Damn it, I thought they would loosen his confidence a bit. I need to decide what to do fast. I comply with his demands, but I have my handgun, which is holstered, and the small of my back around my waist, I could go for it. Oh! How far are we in? 18 minutes. Oh, I'm going to leave this one here. Oh, this is insane. If you guys enjoyed this really messed up episode, please like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.